Now, one way to think about biotech, this is like opening up an entire age or era. In the long term, that might, this might be the biggest development of the 21st century at some level. Because what's happening now is we have the ability to understand the genome, not just of us, but all plants, all animals. We can actually manipulate them very cost effectively to actually change them, nip them out, nip certain genes out, evolve certain genes, meld different genes. That's doable. It's cheap. It's this thing called CRISPR that if you're tracking it. And you start to do that, and they're only going to get better and better, right? So then you start going, huh, we could maybe create materials instead of, you know, digging it up in the ground and smelting it in steel. Maybe we could grow trees stronger. Or we could, anyhow, there's a bunch of ways that you could essentially grow materials, grow food differently, including meat, which I'm going to get to, and all these things that start to be a paradigm shift in, oh, my God, we can actually grow the things around us rather than kind of build them in the traditional uh, industrial way. Now, so this is this big debate. And the question is, are we there yet? We've gone pretty far, but where are we? I would say we're starting to tip. It's not, I'm not, but it's not rolling down that thing. We got a lot of issues around people's acceptance of genetic engineering and things like that. But here's some things you should know as outsiders who don't really know the technology. This is a logarithmic scale. It took us $2 billion to crack the first human genome at the beginning of the decade here. And now the cost per human genome is under 1000 bucks, and by this decade, it'll be 100 bucks. It'll be, in fact, uh, this, is if you, this is the classic Moore's Law, which is how the pricing of essentially computer chips came down. It took it 40 years to drop as much as this has happened in 20 years. So you got dirt cheap kind of <laughs> genomes now. Uh, anyone could do it. The other thing is money's been flowed into the biotech in a similar way. I was here in the 90s when it was all going to the digital companies. This was a similar thing as the early 90s to the late 90s in the dot-com thing. This is happening now. It happened in biotech. And since the pandemic with the mRNA and all these new breakthroughs, there's just an unbelievable amount of money that's going to biotech now. So they got the money. They got the techniques. Will it scale? So I'm going to talk to you about one thing here that you can kind of think about. That's a good example of what might take off here. Cultured meats. Cultured meats is essentially you take a cell of an animal and you grow it in a vat. You just give it the nutrients, amino acids, water, various things that a cow would basically have to take by roaming around and chewing grass and stuff. You just do it. In, it's much more efficient, but it's actually a doable thing now. So the question is, will it be adapted? I think I'm not sure. It's interesting. I think it's tipping. You can kind of think about that a little bit. But here's what's driving it in that bigger picture way. Think about risks kind of stuff. Is this is the world's consumption of beef, and, or not beef, this is, uh, is it beef? Yeah, total meat production. Is when middle class people in all these, all over the world, basically once they get some food, get, get, get some um, money, they want to eat meat, man. I mean, everybody wants to eat meat, right? So you've seen this go up to the point. And then in the meantime, Beef in particular is the biggest impact of all foods on CO2, basically, greenhouse gases. I mean, just way out there. See that at the bottom there? Pigs and, and cat, uh, uh, chickens way up there. So there's going to be a driver here, and there already is a lot of pressure now. And so the question is, these are pulling out to about 2040. These are reasonable projections of how we're going to try to probably throttle back conventional meat. This is the impossible burger thing, the plant-based meat. Cultured meat, though, is going to start taking it off, and ultimately it can, you can do anything like that. You can be fish, you can be whatever, and they're doing all kinds of it now. You're going to see it in, in chicken and all kinds of stuff. There's 80 startups in that, mostly in the Bay Area right now. 